Hi, everybody. Are we ready to paint again today? Number three. Who knew, you know, how fun this would be? But here we are. Yesterday was fun. I know we, we got to paint with people from all over the country. I get excited about this kind of thing because I think art is special because it makes us feel. And it's important because our feelings right now are in turmoil, you know? Um, you can use art. They do use art in therapy. There's all kinds of studies about how art can put you in a zone, put you in a state so that you can calm yourself and your mind. And so that's why we're doing this. I talk about it with music all the time with my students that listening to music is really good, but actually participating in music. Um, there are m multiple studies that say it is so good for your brain. <laughs> it lights up all the parts of your brain. And I think it's very similar with what we're doing here, painting. I know some of you are just watching, but, and that's fine, but participate if you can, because it, it is a, it's like a meditation. I have a friend, well, I've had a couple friends the last couple of days that we've been talking over text <laughs> about their process and how they're feeling when they're doing these paintings, which is kind of a cool thing because we're just doing silly little paintings, right? It's fun, but it's not going to change the world necessarily. But if you take it seriously and you allow yourself to um, go to a place where you're just really focused, like my girlfriend Sandy was telling me that she feels like it's almost like a prayer feeling and that's how I always describe it too. It's like a meditation and a prayer. It's kind of the same posture in your spirit as a prayer. There's something about it that that you're turning off your your logic necessarily. <laughs> you, you know, your your thought process that's very logical and linear and you're allowing your creativity side to come out and it's more of a listening to the spirit and flowing in that. And so let that happen in your mind and I think that'll it'll be good for the whole world. <laughs> One by one, right? One by one, we're gonna we're gonna walk in in peace. So we're excited to get started here. So let's do it. We have our supplies ready. Everybody needs to have some watercolor paper. Somebody was asking about what watercolor paper is, and it's important to to use watercolor paper. It's thicker than regular paper and it absorbs the color better. Um, I think if you've been trying to use like just copy paper, copier paper, you're probably feeling a little frustrated because once you put water on that paper, it's, it's just kind of almost dissolves, <laughs> gets see-through. So if you can order it from Amazon or something, get some water paper color for the next, uh, water paper color paper well, <laughs> for the next couple. You also need some water color paints. So these are just fine. What brand do you use? Oh, well, what brand paper do I use? You know what? I have this big, huge thing under here. It's a big paper. And let me look real quick. This is what I have here. Canson. Papers of inspiration in, in French. Canson. Probably like singing. Well, that's what I have. This is an 18 by 24 paper, and I've been cutting it to the right size. You can buy it in any, any size and shape. And really, you know, this is mixed media paper. It's not the thickest kind. If you get real watercolor paper, it's, it's pretty thick and really nice. I don't know if you can see my paper is a little bit, um, it gets a little wrinkly. I think that's because it's not the thickest um, watercolor paper that you can buy, but it works. It's better than regular paper. So watercolor paper. I also want to know what kind of type of white pen you use. The white pen, I have Artistro <laughs> paint marker pen with a fine, extra fine point. And I bought this, it was like in a six pack or something for five bucks or something like that. Watercolor brushes look like this. They have a tip, a fine tip here, so you can make really um, defined brush strokes. But they have a large enough base here that you can really spread the paint. So I have, this is my biggest one. I go down to like the teeny tiny one too, where you, if you, if you have some 
fine detail work if you want to buy those. Those are Dugato artist brushes. We can put all of these on links for those things on, um, on the site here. We'll find them, <laughs> you know. But really, truly, like the last few days, I didn't have my watercolor uh, paint brushes, and I was just using a regular paintbrush. So you can use whatever. That's not going to change, change things as much as using the, the wrong paper. But I also have these watercolors. They are the Master's Touch uh, watercolors I showed last yesterday, and there was a link yesterday as well. But the, the cool thing about these is you can move them around. Like today, I'm going to do one with warm colors, one with cool colors. So I put my cool colors in one row, and then I put the, the warmer colors in another row. So that way, I, I um, don't have to hunt and peck <laughs> for the colors I want. They just pick up and move around. This was just nice. And then as they get um, used up, you can buy them one by one. But if you have this kind, that works just as well. Not a problem. Don't feel like you're, you have less of a paint than I do, because you don't. Uh, you might notice that I have a henna on my arm today. It's, it's in the phase where it's all like mud. <laughs> so hopefully it stays on while I'm moving around here. Usually I do it at night while I'm sleeping, then it goes away. But Henna's fun. I just I wanted to mention it because I know people are going to see that on the camera. And I thought, you know what? This is a great time to tell you about my friend um, AJ Smith. Basically, she does all kinds of cool things. But one of the things she does is she's a mermaid. She does mermaid parties. She dresses up like a mermaid. She kind of always looks like a mermaid. <laughs> but she dresses up like a mermaid. She has a tail. And she goes in people's pools and like, oh, hello, children. <laughs> stuff out. She's fun. But she does Hannah, and she was doing it on me for a while. And then she said, well, why don't you do your own? So she gave me a batch. And I've been able to do my own. Just stick them in the freezer. So if you want a recipe for that, I have a recipe if you want to try that while we're sitting around at home. It's fun. You just put it on mud, leave it on for as long as it'll stay. Yeah, and then, the well, I could. I could do a session about Hannah. You leave it on there for like as long as you can. And then it stays on there for a week or two. It's fun. Yeah. OK, let's do some dragonfly paintings, OK? All right. First, we're having the outline. So hopefully, people, you all saw the outline on Facebook and were able to copy it somehow. Some people are putting it in their copiers and just just printing it out on their watercolor paper. Some people are holding it up to a window, taping it up there, and put a new paste, uh, piece of paper over it, the watercolor paper over, and tracing. Or we'll do it real quick right now. We'll look for the shapes, and we'll sketch it out. And then we'll start painting. Oh, the other thing people have is graphite paper, if you have that. That's a fun thing to do. You lay it down and push through. Looks like a, it's like a pencil, but it's on paper. That's a great thing to do. Something you could order on Amazon probably. Okay. So let's look for our shapes. All right. Whenever you're copying, you're going to look for shapes. So let's start with these bodies, these, these dragonfly bodies. First of all, have you noticed that all three of these paintings have had wings? They're all been flying animals. Just kind of interesting what I picked. Maybe I'm feeling like we need to get take flight or something. <laughs> They're really pretty though. Okay, so we're gonna look at these dragonfly bodies. So here I see kind of a triangle. The bottom of the body looks like a little bit of a rounded triangle. And then we have a small rectangle above that and a bigger rectangle above that, almost square. And then another one and then a baby head that looks like a little square or a half circle. And the antenna, I made those kind of squiggly wigglies. Just let them be whatever you feel like. They're not very um, elegant, these. These are more. Like yesterday, we had elegant antenna. These are a little squiggly. <laughs> All right, so then we're going to look. This is a big, long shape. It's basically a very, very thin, long, thin um, triangle. So we're starting at the base of this triangle, and we're going to 
go down and get smaller and smaller, tighter and tighter until it's just one line. And the line continues down and then we have some dotted lines because they have kind of that whippy tail, I think. All right, I did put a little squiggle here and a little squiggle there. That's kind of a, I don't know why. Looks like it's moving or something. All right, we'll continue on this dragonfly. You'll notice that it's kind of at a, what is this angle? 30, de oh, this would be 90, 45 degree angle like that. Oh, it should have said that earlier. <laughs> but that's kind of the angle that we have this one at. Now we're gonna t start at the top of the body here and we're gonna kind of go up, straight up and then over to make a, a loopy, very thin oval and attach it to the body again. And this one is similar, but we're gonna have it this kind of sausage shape. And then this little area is going to attach to the bird, to the dragonfly. See that? So we've got kind of a sausagey thing and then up into the bird with a, with a small little connection point. Okay. This one, we've got similar, another petal looking half circle. And then coming out from under this one, this one's kind of overlapping, you see? They're not exactly the same. This one's gonna be under this wing a bit, coming out and around and up to the end of that. <laughs> We're gonna do the same thing over here at another 45 degree angle this way. So something you could do to give yourself a little bit of a reference point is to maybe draw from the from the corner of your paper down across so that you see that there's a line. Then you could draw your, bird, your um, dragonfly along that line. That way you're gonna have, have it be crisscrossing that way. So I'm not gonna redo that one. I'm gonna say if you haven't drawn it yet, then pause this recording or, or this live thing and you, it'll be recorded. You'll be able to hop right back on once you um, draw that second one, okay? All right, so I'm assuming that everybody has their two dragonfly outlines, and we're gonna start painting now. Now let's look at it before we start. Okay, so this is gonna be similar to the bee wings. If, some, if, if any of you did the, um, the bee painting a couple days ago, those wings were similar to these wings. You can see that we're gonna put the paint along the top because this is where their strongest ridge of their, of their wing seems to be. I'm not a bug expert, but I was looking at a bunch of pictures. <laughs> so they have a strong top wing part, and then it gets a little bit more delicate underneath. So we're gonna start by putting water and then adding color to the top of those wings. Okay, let's start with the blue one. Now, just like yesterday, Feel free to use whatever colors you want to use. You might want to make, you know, an orange one and a, I don't know, whichever color is purple. I used bluish green and purple and orange, but you can do whatever you want. Okay. So here's mine. Are we all lined up? I'm going to go in with my brush. Now remember, water is the most important ingredient in watercolors. Almost think of it like a paint. You're gonna get your brush wet and kind of let the excess water off. I'm gonna turn my paper so that my bee, or my um, dragonfly is perpendicular to me. Okay, so I'm gonna go in with just water and I'm gonna color that whole wing with water. All right, now remember, we don't want these wings to look like they're, um, I keep thinking the wrong, what is it? Is opaque mean that it's see-through or does it mean it's not see-through? Translucent. translucent, that's the word. So we do not want these to be opaque. We want them to be translucent. I'm gonna go in with some water and get my bluish green color, kind of this is a teal color. It's my very favorite color in the world. I have a lot of it in my house. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna start from the, from the middle here and I'm gonna go across and put the paint down. 
And as I do, it's going to start kind of melding into the bottom. I'm going to clean my brush, tap it, and I'm going to move that water around so the paint and the color move into the other part of the wing. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing on the other wing, the other top wing. Put the water all over the wing. And put color in. Ooh, it's really pooling nicely. That's so cool. Now you can kind of come down around the sides a little bit. Okay, we don't want to control it too much. Let it be nice and ethereal looking. Okay, I got out of the lines right there. I'm going to use a little bit of water to dilute it and then put some paper towel on the top. Okay, good? All right, so you'll notice here on the blue, I also have green and yellow. Blue and yellow make green, right? So I'm gonna go in with yellow first, and it's gonna probably meld with the blue and make green. So we're gonna go in with some yellow. It's already wet, right? We still have wetness on the paper. We're gonna go in and let some of this yellow move around in the water. And it might turn green. It might stay a little bit yellow. Ooh, it really got green. Move it around. Okay, I'm gonna go on the other wing. Let some yellow go in. This doesn't have a lot of painting happening in this painting today. It's a pretty simple one. So just take your time. We have time, right? Just take your time and let yourself just feel relaxed. No need to rush. Play around with it. A lot of times I have to say this with um, acrylic paints when I'm teaching, but um, when you're painting, you don't want to over mix colors. You want to let them blend, but sometimes when you, you um, have too many brush strokes and you keep brush stroking over and over, that color, those two colors will meld together, become one color, and a lot of times it's a brown. <laughs> But the interesting part is where it melds, where it kind of let you, when you let it mix in different ways. So don't be afraid to just let it sit for a minute and see what happens. If you keep brushing, it's gonna all turn one color, okay? So we don't want that. We want it to be flowy looking, all right? Okay, I think those look pretty good. We'll go in, uh, like we said yesterday, with watercolors, the best thing is to let them dry a little bit and then go in and add layers as you want to as you want to to get the right color get bolder colors if you're at home and want to you can get your hair dryer be careful because when it's really wet it can kind of spray but a nice gentle hair dryer will will uh, dry it out real easily and fast okay all right let's do the bottom wings okay if you notice here I don't know if you can see very well, but I, I have a lot of white left in these um, wings. I've basically just put some yellow in there and then I gave, the, I gave a drop of orange on either side, kind of, when I started it looks like, looked like little circles. And then once the water kind of let, let it have its way, <laughs> I let it have its way, it kind of started star bursting out into cool, cool, cool shapes. Okay, so we're gonna put a little bit of blue along the very top and mostly, mostly yellow. Okay, so I'm gonna go in, get my brush wet, go in with my blue, tiny bit of blue. I'm gonna 
make that line a little defined. Ooh, I still have some yellow on my brush, I think. Ooh, I didn't make it wet. Ooh, that's gonna be too defined, I think. Let's clean our brushes. Take the water, go in with the water, paint with water. Get it all wet. Okay, now I'm gonna go in with yellow. Put some yellow. I'm gonna leave a lot of white. I just think it looks even more translucent <laughs> when I leave it white. Going in just with water right now and just moving it around. Okay. Okay. Now while it's wet, I'm gonna go in with my orange. Get my brush wet. Load it with a little bit of orange. And I'm gonna drop that orange right there. See how I made a circle? It's gonna get cool in a minute. It's spreading out already. So fun. I'm gonna make here around the body a little bit darker just because that's the connection point and so the wings would go down into that um, body and there would be a little shadow. Yeah. Maybe put another little dot right here just cause I just feel like it. You could put all kinds of things on there if you want. Okay, I'm gonna use that same teal to go in and color this body, bottom part of the body. Now this part, I'm not going to put water. I'm going to just let it be dry paper with my damp brush with some teal. That way I have more control and it's not gonna bleed. His body is a little bit more defined than the wings. So we're gonna go in and paint the body. Now I, I left a little white spot on his body too, just because it's more interesting when it's not all solid, okay? And that is gonna go nice and slowly. Don't try to rush here. Just gonna pull that paint. No need to get more. Just take the paint that you already have on your paper and start pulling it down this long tail part. Okay, nice and smoothly. If it's not smooth, if, you're, if your brush is going and making little scraggly sounds and, and lo it looks a little scraggly, it's probably not enough water in your brush. So put water, dampen it on your paper towel and try again. It should, it should move very smoothly. And I'm gonna go all the way down to the tail the tip. There you go. All right, I'm gonna put a little bit of blue at the top of his body here. What are you guys gonna do for the weekend? <laughs> Going out? <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of a weird time, isn't it? Hard to know what the plan what might be. I saw somebody, I think Bonnie Stimson, do you guys are you here, Bonnie? <laughs> she, she put on her Facebook page a funny thing. It was a picture of their, um, of like a, a blueprint of a house. <laughs> and it said, looking at the map, making plans for the weekend. <laughs> I thought that was cute. Yeah, I don't know. Do more of this if we want. Okay. I'm gonna go in with some brown for the rest of his body. I might add a little bit of red as well. But I'm gonna go in with brown. Can you see my brown? It's way over there. Any color really would do. You could do black or whatever color you're feeling. I'm just gonna make his head brown. And this part of his body brown. So 
really rainy, stormy day today in San Antonio, which helps, makes you feel like you should, you can kind of hunker in, you know. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of red on this part of his body, just for a little pizzazz. <laughs> okay, so that's, that's the first layers of this dragonfly. It's not perfect looking, it's more magical looking. Think about it like a fairy, like a little fairy in the grass, you know? It's gonna be a little bit of a, a, a ethereal, magical looking. Not like a, not like a cartoon. Does that make sense? Put a little bit more shadows by his body here. Do you have any questions? Hi, Carrie Thresher, Alicia Godin, Amber Hill, Julie Overton. I'm glad you're here, no problem. Can hardly be late to a party that's always online. It's never gonna go away. <laughs> I, we'd scared our boys. They're like, they're afraid to post anything on, online. So we've told them it never goes away. <laughs> it's true. Okay, I'm gonna move on to this, this other dragonfly. So I'm gonna flip them over, flip that guy over. We'll go to the next one. So this one, I, I actually made a little happy accident. So when I was doing it, I thought, um, I, was, I made this one first and then I thought, I just started acting like I was gonna make him exactly the same. And I thought, that's boring. But I went in and did put this teal color right here first. And I thought, oh no, I don't wanna make him exactly the same. So I went back in with purple and it, it looks really cool. So I'm gonna do that again. I mixed the colors, mixed blue and purple together. So I'm gonna do that for, again. I'm gonna be wild and crazy and go in with some blue first. <laughs> So painting with, with uh, just the water. Okay, I'm gonna do this one as well. Okay, going with the teal again. Just dropping that paint into the water, basically, and letting it soak. Okay, then I'm gonna do the purple on top of it. It's kind of a purplish red color. Such a pretty color. Magenta, maybe you'd call it. Can you slide your palette over so you can see the color? Sure. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. So this is the color I picked right here. It's kind of a purplish red color. Okay, and I'm gonna go in with that over the top of this. I'm having a hard time reaching around, so I'm gonna do that. Okay, so I'm going back in. Ooh, look how pretty that is. And it's mixing with that teal color and making it even more purple, if you notice. Oh, that's such a pretty color. Do you guys have different feelings for different colors? I think there's a whole study about that, but I know our boys had different, when they were little, they were learning their colors, they would always have feelings for their colors. Just naturally they would say, oh, this makes me feel like this. They also did that with numbers too. They all had like personalities for their numbers. It's interesting. I don't know. I don't think I ever thought that way about numbers, but colors definitely. This makes me excited right here. Teal makes me relaxed feeling. That's why I kind of put, I have a rug that's traveled with me from house to house. Teal, I love that color. Okay, I'm gonna go in on the second 
second wings, the bottom wings, and do a similar thing. Give them that top ridge of their wings. Hmm. Are you guys staying on schedule now that you're home? It's kind of hard, isn't it? I was thinking, we keep staying up too late. Dropping the color in onto the water. Last night I had a, a laundry situation, so it took me longer than I thought and I went to bed later than I wanted to. We've been out of town and sheesh, I had a lot of laundry. It was like the whole king bed was full of, and usually my boys do their own laundry, but because we had gone on a trip, it all kind of got Mixed, whew, it was a lot. Staying up late. It's the lack of schedule and it's the time change, right? It's always every year, something. I think, I think something we should rethink, I think. All right, so we have the top ridge happening and it's starting to bleed down in. Okay, now I'm gonna go in with orange, orange and yellow for the rest of the color on these wings. So get your brush wet. This is still pretty wet under here. I'm gonna start adding the color in. Ooh, it's really blending. Oh, look at that, that's so cool. I hope it stays there, I'm not gonna touch it. It's all blendy and wild looking. Okay, orange, a little bit more orange. Like we said before, this is a whole exercise in not controlling everything, right? Letting it be what it is. Let it be, mm -hmm. right? Oh, if Charlotte, if you're on here, Charlotte from Tico, oh my goodness. She's been singing on her, singing live on her Facebook or Instagram. She makes me cry. Okay, I'm going back in with orange again. Ooh, I touched it. Ooh, it's moving. Oh, I don't know if you can see that, but that's the coolest. It's just moving around by itself, telling me this is what I want to do. <laughs> Remember that watercolors lighten as they dry, so they're gonna be less vibrant as they dry. We'll have to go in if we want it to be a little bit more, um, more vibrant and add. Oh, that's looking so cool. All right, I'm gonna move on to the body. I'm licking up some of this paint over here. It's a little drippy. Okay. Now this body, I used um, more red and some purple and some brown. So I'm gonna go in with that red again, reddish purplish. And I'm going up with a, with a wet brush on a dry paper so I can control it. Ooh, didn't control it very well. Went right out of the lines. Remember, if you have a problem, you can dab the paper and it a lot of times will come up. Okay. So more, more purple. I'm actually gonna find some purple here. Get that in there. And I'm gonna use my brush nice and smooth. Let it be fatter. 
with this brush, if you push harder, the, the line will be thicker, right? Can you see that? The line will be thicker if you push down, and as you go, you can lift up and it'll be smaller, right? A lot of times when they make, people make uh, watercolor flowers, they'll do that, yeah. Okay, so I used up that purple. <laughs> oh, I was off camera, sorry. Can you see that? Anyway, so going down, using the very tip, and letting it get smaller as I go. Okay. I'm going with brown again for his head. Move it around in there. Maybe I'll put a little blue on his body. Why not? Kind of echo the other side. Oh, it didn't stay blue, did it? Mixed with the brown. Try again. You can always keep trying. Go in with that blue again, see what happens. Yeah, a little less water. Okay. Now, now that I have both dragonflies done with the first, um, first pass, we can go back over some of the areas that I feel like aren't as vibrant as I would like them to be. So I, I think that this is nice. I'm gonna add a little bit more blue to it just because I think it could look a little more vibrant. But because this is my second, um, my second go at it, there's already paint down. It has dried. If I go in with just paint on my brush onto a dry paper, it's gonna be like a line again. If I go in with a lot of water, it's gonna make this paint pool up again and move around. So this is a little tricky. You wanna go in with a wet enough brush and a little bit of water, but feel it out. If you start painting and it's like, whoa, there's lots of water, you might wanna stop and dab and start over. But if it starts, if it's just a line like a marker and that's not what you want, maybe you do want that. But if that's not what you want, stop and put a little bit more water on there. Does that make sense? So I'm gonna put some water. I'm gonna just feel this out. But I want it to be a little, a little more um, defined along this edge here. I don't know. We can all feel it out. And I'm going to add water, see how that kind of pushed it so it's less opaque. <laughs> I'm going to use those words now. I was wanting to use them yesterday and I kept thinking, I'm not sure if I know exactly. I had them mixed up in my mind. Okay. I'm gonna go back in with that color again. Same blue. And I'm gonna move it around a little bit more. Okay. I want you to remind me, I mean, I want to remind you to show, show us your paintings. Post them. It's so encouraging to see everybody's unique paintings. Just comment below and, and add the pictures. I just love them. All right, I put a little dot there. Maybe, maybe this butterfly has a dot on its top wing too. Sierra, you're on. Hi, girl. So fun. Okay. Now I'm going to go over to this one. Now this bur this purple butterfly is still pretty wet. Oh, I'm getting my henna is making a mess. Really making a mess. This one I'm going to add a little dot. Maybe where should I put the little dot on the wing? I'll take, I'll go in with some orange and add a little dot right, maybe right here. Just a hint of a dot. Fun. 
Hey, hey, girl. All right. Now, if, if as you're painting, you're feeling distressed and not relaxed, I want to encourage you to, um, to do this again when I'm not talking at you. <laughs> Try again today and just be still and quiet and do it at your own pace and see what happens in your heart and your spirit. The whole point is to not be comparing ourselves, but to, to be allowing our creativity to come out. We're all creative. We're all made creative. And the problem is we think that we need to be taught how to be creative or certain people are creative. We're all creative in our own ways. Um, and mostly we just have to be given permission give our children permission, give them time and space, but as not just kids, I think it's all of us need to give ourselves permission and time to let that out in whatever way you whatever way you want to. We're all we're all different, right? There's room for everyone to be themselves in this world and actually we need us. We need us all to be living wholeheartedly, as Brene Brown says, right? That lady has been an encouragement to so many people. She's amazing. Read her books if you haven't. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to let those dry for a minute, and then we're going to go in with the fun uh, splishy splashies. So I want to remind you, if you become a $25 a month sponsor on Patreon, I am holding painting parties for people in that group on 16 by 20 canvases. So like this, can you see that? Big, big paintings will hang out on Zoom or something that's more um, interactive. So if you're interested in doing that once a month, that one is going to be next Tuesday at seven o'clock in the evening. So get a glass of wine and get your girlfriends on the phone or something. <laughs> get your family around, you know. $25 is a good steal if you're wanting to do a painting party and do everybody at the same time. I am trying to get together packages that I can send you with all the, all the paint and the canvases. Until then, on Patreon there, um, I have a list of the supplies that you can buy on Amazon and have them shipped to you. And that's five canvases and a pack of paints that you can use for multiple paintings. Um, we'll do one, one a month. So if you have a group of you, you can get them at Michael's too if you're wanting to go out and about. Yeah behind you is some of the painting party stuff? Yeah, those paintings behind us. We've done all those paintings at uh, painting parties. <laughs> kind of fun. The one that we're going to do this Tuesday is on Patreon. I posted it there. It's kind of like a place where we can be a community and encourage each other in our creativity. So go there and check it out. I have articles there. I have, um, oh, we're going to do a book study. I'm going to do artist, The Artist's Way. That'll be fun, too. Other than that, those are the... If you want prints of anything, that's on my website. sarahgesey.com is my website. And you can get prints made of all anything you see there through my Etsy store. So Etsy is Sarah Giesey Studio. Um, and I'll be sending newsletters out. So all those things, those are ways we can keep in contact. All right, that is the business of the day. But the next one we're gonna do, I'll keep keep you posted, is we're gonna do this guy. Can no you see? No wings this time. <laughs> Isn't he fun? This is just fun. We'll do this one next, so keep your eye out for when that will be. Yeah, so let's keep going on this, these uh, dragonflies. Okay, last fun little e exercise on this one. I think it, I think it's fun. You notice that it's got a bunch of watermarks and dots everywhere. So we're gonna use a little tiny bit of paint and a, more water than paint, and we're gonna make some dots. 
We did a little bit of it last yesterday on our painting. Have my brush quite wet. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of blue and get it, keep it really wet. All right, and then we're gonna hold our, hold our finger like this and let the water come out. I think I needed more paint on my, I was a little conservative. And I kind of like when it goes on the butterfly that's still a little bit wet and it's letting those, um, those dots are kind of expanding. And I'm also gonna go in where I want to have the dots to be a little bit bigger and just put water on top so that they have a bigger profile. All right. Again, those are gonna dry lighter than what we see right now. And I'm gonna go in with that red, reddish purplish color and do the same thing. Okay, I've got tiny little dots and I'm gonna go in with just water and get, make them a little bigger. Just a little drop of water will make them expand. Ooh, ooh, that's a big one. It'll make them expand out into bigger droplets. Fun, huh? Looks like they're flying in colorful rain. <laughs> hey, we got it. Now something else you could do if you're feeling like you, you still aren't quite done you could go in and put, once, they're, once these wings are dry, you could use either your white marker, paint marker, or a pen or a pencil, and you can make rib marks like we did on the bee. If you look up dragonflies on, online, they have some beautiful photos there and really intricate, intricate designs on those wings. So I might do that with my second one here. I think I might go in and make some ribs on, on there after it dries. So maybe keep an eye out. I'm gonna do that after we, after we get off with each other. So that is that. I think we, we successfully made some dragonflies. Okay, tomorrow or whichever day, maybe Monday, maybe we'll take the weekend off. That's the painting we'll do and be encouraged and have joy and be at peace. Take some time to really let yourself uh, get in the flow of your creativity and open yourself up to what the Spirit is saying to you.